etching. This is now dry enough, ready for etching, scratching, for want of another term. Um, but what I would say first of all is, that was the pound side did earlier. If you like, you can save it. Because each time you start to do it, you're going to waste um, your white velvet. So, one I've used earlier, little bag bag, or a small gripper top bag, and it will keep, and you can pop it away and just bring it out any time you use it. Really handy when you're in a hurry, um, and it doesn't waste as much white velvet. So, I'm just going to do a really simple border. Quickest method I know of getting something simple around that anybody can do, literally anybody can do. Right, don't use two, don't make the mistake of using too tiny a tool. Very handy for neat little tiny things, but you want to be able to see what you're etching. You want sparkle when the mother of pearl goes in later, you want contrast of shine. And matte finish, so don't use too tiny a tool. There's all sorts you can use. Yeah, I think I think that's the mistake I have often made. Yes, of using I've done it. I haven't made enough, enough scratch. Yes, um, and then when you put the mother of pearl on, you, you can't. can't actually it's not see twinkling it back up. enough. No, uh, you need to. The more you take out a sharpened end of a brush, works wonderful. That's cuticle stick again. Works really well. This is just. Um, that was from Hells of Harrogate, just a, a stick, cheap stick really, um, which you can sharpen, resharpen again to uh, give a good point on it. But these I like because the method I'm going to do now is just sort of a, like a bramble type branches that go round. So basically they're going to undulate round and I'll do them intertwining and this gives you something to work from. So really just, and if you can see how it's starting and it should. Now if it sticks a little bit, unfortunately we've got a very humid atmosphere at the moment, so it's the UK. It's really never. yes. <laughs> no it is. <laughs> it is. It is. So it's actually sticking a little bit, although it's been dry two days this. Now then, there we go. Now then. That's given us just a very simple brown, bramble sort of effect. That will come out and it will re-scratch out. It's just because it's a moist atmosphere. Right, that's one. Now what I'm going to do now is take another one just to give a bit of variety. So I would just come like that. Now that can go around and you can brush that off. And away we go. And if you make a mistake, we'll cover it up with spots, flowers, extra leaves or anything else we can think of. Right, random. Yeah, so that gives you something to work on, on, a basis to yeah. work on. And don't worry about like this inside area, that can be wiped back um, with a cotton bud or scratch back. Very often I make a lacy effect on the inside by scribbling into it, but I'll show you doing that. Now the next stage, what I would also add is you can actually use a very fine pencil to draw on if you want to, or you can actually trace on top, very gently using a very fine carbon if you want to. But really, the easiest method is to perhaps draw on some really simple leaves and make them. Now this is just to start off with, they're not going to stay like this, but and it's probably going to be a little on the rubbish side, but at least it gives an idea of just how simple a thing you can do, and we can make some of them come into that area and go into that. And the more you scratch out, the more you white you get back, um, the more twinkle you're going to get eventually. You can put little brambly bits on. Um, let's see. Right. Flowers. Okay, those are actually going to be scratched out like that. And this is where the slightly larger one comes in handy because it's a bit quicker. And if you make a mistake, you can change the shape of your leaf. And if you really make a big mistake, you don't panic either because you can actually pen back lines down the centres of the leaves, which look quite nice as well. So there we go. That's very quickly 
So that could be a flower, petal, a leaf, poinsettia, whatever. You could make it into anything you want. And the fact that they are very random, you can go round easily, creating a few. And you can actually do quite fancy leaves with jagged edges on, as in, right, do a stem. This is another variation. And something like that. And again, those bits that you see sticking, normally that wouldn't happen in a very dry atmosphere. And scratch out. So you can do all sorts of... A little wisteria, isn't it? Well, Christmassy, holly-type leaves, or pine, uh, you know, effect, or just um, pointed, straggly leaves. Chrysanthemum leaves, poppy leaves, you know, that kind of ragged, random edge. Mm. So, although that doesn't go with that, it's just to show you the, the type of thing that you can do. So let's scratch that one out, and then we've got a little cluster that we can work on, because to work around the border, obviously, it would take too long. You're just repeating with what you're going to do in this corner. So there's some leaves which I'll later decorate up, or maybe pen the leaf markings back in. But what I would do in that, I want to fill this as much as possible. So I would then do some very simple little flowers. And just cluster those as much as you've got patience for. And take all those little bits off. They will actually come off if you whisk them over with a hairdryer. They will actually come off. But don't forget that those little specks are actually going to turn white. And don't, you don't notice them but actually it should all come off quite easily. Right, but I would probably play about until I've actually got them all off being fussy. There we go. So you would carry on like that and you can do, oh, so let's say this, there's another leaf in there, another leaf there. And we're getting quite a cluster of white coming together. And if I had large areas that I didn't like, that were large blank areas, which really don't do anything. They look quite nice, but really, you can decorate them up with um, little dots, maybe some, I'd go, I think I've changed to a finer. So, little trails, like that, especially if you were doing grapes or berries or something like that. That really works quite well. You could do butterflies, and if you weren't very good at doing them, you could trace them on with a very fine carbon first and then scratch them out then. Um, so really, I would just carry on going around, putting a pattern in, scraping out the basis of it first, and then scratch it out mm -hmm. until you'd gone round. And if I had some blank areas, I'd pop another little flower in, say, a tiny flower or little buds, anything. You can have the centres out if you want to, but the, all these bits will actually come out. But you can go back and what I call fine tune it afterwards by taking out all the little extra bits that you didn't spot in the first instance. And if you hold it up to the light, you can see where the, there may be little touches left. I may add that this has been done. <laughs> rather quickly yeah. so it's not the best work i've ever done but it's just to give you the idea because but you can actually put detail back on with enamel and things yes uh, which i've got done and i'll show you mm. or you can thin the mix which we had earlier even more with a little more water and you can pen lines back in mm. or even if you've got a bad scratch or a mark on somewhere don't sponge it back in just get a little brush and tap a little colour in because when it fires it'll just go white mm. um, and you would never notice that it was a mistake there. So you would carry on repeating that. Now for the edges, all right, we've got a rather rough edge there. So if you've got nothing in, you can actually pen a butterfly in. And if you've, I mean, I could do that first and then put the board around. Or if you were worried, worried about damaging it, what I would do is do the border. Then I would get something to protect the border round while I put the drawing in and pen it on. Hmm. If I hadn't made my mind of what I was going to do. Um, and then you can fire that and paint some colour in at the same time. And this can be fired 
up to about 770, no more than 780. If you go too high on a soft glaze, it could melt into the glaze if you're on bone china and then your surface would not be matte, it would start to meld in and you'd lose that nice matte finish. So about 770. Porcelain is not a problem, you can go higher on that, it would stay um, still stay matte on there. So really it's what you've got patience for when it comes to that. But you can do patterns as well. Um, and as I said on before, on the inside, you can just literally do squiggly sort of patterns like that kind of thing, just to fill it. Because don't forget, when that goes white, it's going to look like a lacy edge. Mm. Or you can do another one, is to perhaps um, do tiny leaves that repeat and go over and fill. And this works wonderful. In fact, unfortunately, I think I've, I've not got the one that I did. It's gone. But you see, on there, if you just repeat, you can scratch them out or you can just do tiny ones like that, but, or you can scratch them out. But really, the simple way is just to use. It lets light in mm. um, as much light as possible. Yeah. So that's, that's really knitting together a pattern. If you don't want to do that, just scribble the edge a little bit, perhaps with something a bit more blunt to give a more gentle broken edge. Perhaps like that. This is where a stuttery hand comes in very handy. And quickly, if you don't have time to think about it, you do it more random. And that's just literally creating a very loose pattern. It's not scraping off very well, unfortunately, because uh, we're not used to these hot temperatures, are we? Are we? No, we're not. <laughs> no, we are not. Beautiful.